that time of year again, everybody. It's time to for me to talk about the new Star Wars movie, and that new Star Wars movie is The Last Jedi, directed by Ryan, directed and written by Ryan Johnson. And without further ado, let's get right to it. Star Wars: The Last Jedi starts out fairly close to where The Force Awakens left off. We have the Resistance members are fleeing the Emp Empire, or not the Empire this time, the their first order and they are running away from them going through space but unfortunately the first order has uh, tracking abilities even to track them through light speed basically making their means of escape impossible so um, different characters go off to co help um, figure that out and then we have the other plot of this movie which is the plot following Rey as she goes and finds Luke Skywalker and gets training from him to and tries to convince him to help the resistance fight the first order now i'm going to be truly honest with you guys i enjoyed this movie quite a bit uh... I, there's definitely aspects of it that were flawed i didn't like one of the one sub one subplot that take place on this one planet that kind of just tampered off the like and just went nowhere almost and almost wasn't needed at one point but it was very important for showing a very thematic side of the Star Wars universe we don't usually see all that often and it was very well done in that regard I would say however um, besides maybe one or two characters feeling a little forced and some of the humor definitely feeling forced and the porgs are just literally minions because all they're meant to be are cute seriously that's the only reason they're in this movie other than that this movie was incredibly enjoyable. I didn't set any expectations for this movie. I went in not hyped at all for anything. I've never theorized about what, where this franchise is going. So I just went in with a complete blank slate. And I enjoyed it immensely. However, that doesn't seem to be the popular consensus among most people right now. So, because I know about this, I am going to... Give, I'm going to give my reasoning for as to why I really enjoyed this movie and maybe you'll agree with me at the end but if you don't I mean that's your opinion you can like this movie or you don't have to like this movie if you don't want to but let me just get started by talking about the characters I thought JJ Abrams did a great job at bringing in these new characters and they bringing in characters we actually cared about except for Captain Phasma who also doesn't get that much screen time Fortunately, lead newcomers such as Ray, Finn, uh, Poe, um, who else? Kylo Ren. All of them, all of uh, those characters were, I thought, really well um, given much space in the movie. They given a lot of screen time for their own individual arcs, and I was really happy about that. And especially with. Uh, Poe, because I thought Poe basically got no screen time in the last movie, and he really didn't get a chance to have, you know, a character besides just an X-Wing pilot and kind of cool dude, you know. But other than that, um, yeah, all of these new characters, all these new lead actors, they did a wonderful job. Daisy Ridley was amazing as Ray as always. Um, John Boyega did a fantastic job as, <clears throat> oh man, Finn. And Oscar Isaac did a great job as Poe. And another person, I think he might have been one of my favorite performances in the entire movie. Oscar, er, <laughs> sorry, Adam Driver as Kylo Ren. He gave it his all in this movie. He played off the part that he meant, that he was meant to play so brilliantly. And he brought this new kind of edge to uh, how a Sith Lord basically operates and he gave his all in this performance and I just I cannot recommend seeing this movie if n for nothing else just for Adam Driver's performance especially when so many people were complaining about him in The Force Awakens I really think that if you had that thought about him in The Force Awakens as just this emo guy you should really check him out in this movie because he just t he just makes himself stand out way more among this big cast. However, now that I've talked about some of the newer cast members and how they did, I want to talk about some of the old comers to this trilogy. Of course, I have to talk about Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker. 
Mark Hamill has not been in a full-length feature Star Wars film for like 30 years now. Return of the Jedi came out in 1983. So, yeah, it's been quite a bit since Mark Hamill's been involved in Star Wars in almost any way, to be honest. However, I thought Mark Hamill gave one of his best performances in this movie. Everything about his character is so nuanced. He brings a very dark side to Luke Skywalker, something we've never really seen before, like, not truly at least, and this basically this dissatisfied old man who just realized he failed in all his training of his students, especially Kylo Ren. And he's kind of just decided he just wants to die. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of depressing, to be honest. And But especially um, as the film goes on and then as... He, and as the film comes to an end, Mark Hamill gives it his all in this role, and he just blew me away. He's great in every scene that he's in, and I can I cannot give enough props to him. I just, ugh, he's so good. And I gotta talk about Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia, and all, as we all know, unfortunately, Carrie Fisher did pass away last year. However, I thought they gave her a very good role, and they gave her a lot more screen time and stuff to do in... This movie, as opposed to The Force Awakens, I am, since the, as of the end of this movie, I'm kind of curious as to what they're going to do with the next movie, because, um, it doesn't exactly do anything to, like, leave her off to, on a note or anything, so I'm wondering if they're just going to kill her in between movies or what, I honestly do not know, so we'll see about that, and other than that, no older, uh, p old comers are present in this movie, not that I can remember. I mean, Peter Mayhew was Chewbacca, but he's always great. That's just a given at this point. I guess I could talk about some of the little side characters. I thought Laura Dern was pretty okay as this uh, commander that takes place on this rebel ship that's fleeing the First Order. And... Oh, yes. Let's... Let's talk about the elephant in the room, Captain Phasma. So this character was very hyped up when the Force release, the Force unleash, the Force Awakens was first coming out, and as of that, um, she didn't get anything to do in the Force Awakens. She kind of was like, "Hey, I'm I'm badass and everything," and then at the end of the film, she just gets captured, and then you pretty much assume she dies, but then she's back in this movie. And guess what? She still gets the same amount of screen time as she did in the last movie. I think maybe even less than in the last movie. And, um, yeah, she plays no significance to the role that she has. And I feel bad for the actress. I can't remember. I think it's Gwendolyn Christie who plays Captain Phasma. I feel bad for her because she plays an excellent role on Game of Thrones. And she's being very underutilized, I would say. I think it's important to talk about the story of this movie, and um, I just want to put something in, something in perspective. This movie is two and a half hours long. It's a very, very long movie, and towards the end, it definitely feels like it, it just kind of keeps going. It drags a bit at some points. There's this one part of the movie um, involving Finn and this other girl, and going to this one planet, and I mentioned it before about how, like, there's a p important theme that p starts in this. But unfortunately, um, besides that, this part of the movie is, like, at least 15 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, maybe more, long. And it honestly could have been cut out of the movie entirely. I mean, especially since, like, it almost amounts to nothing towards the end of the movie. <laughs> and it just, it just definitely feels kind of eh. You know, it just doesn't really work that much, but it gives Finn something to do, so I guess there's that. But other than that, um, thematic-wise, this movie was great at displaying some of these themes of, like, just how uh, the Force... Like, not how the Force works, but how the Force is, like, just, like, this thing. It's not meant for anyone to control it. It's just meant to be there and be amazing and everything and that's what the force is to Luke Skywalker in this movie and there's a lot of other good thematic plot points especially one involving Kylo Ren towards the end of the movie and to avoid spoilers I'm gonna 
put I'm going to talk more about these in the latter half of the video and I will just get my main stuff uh, my main thoughts out of the way right here so the writing in this movie was very well done for the most part it served the thematic purposes that it was given it, get that it gives the movie and it works most well with every scene there's definitely some parts where some dialogue seems a little bit forced and kind of eh, at points but overall I thought Ryan Johnson did a great job at <clears throat> at his um, scripting on this movie and one thing else I also have to talk about is the visuals this movie is beautiful <laughs> like oh my goodness guys this might be one of the best looking Star Wars movies uh, ever I mean yeah it's gonna look better than the, some of the original trilogy I mean that's just given but over the Force Awakens this one is the more visually interesting there's some CG work that's done in this movie that kind of just makes you, it takes it out, you know. You just kind of go like, oh, that's CG, that's fun. But one thing I thought was great, and Andy Serkis um, really gets to shine in his role, of course, as always. Andy Serkis as um, Grand, uh, Supreme Leader Snoke was pretty good, actually. I thought the actual CG work done on the actual character was really well done too it didn't really impress me at all and it kind of looked ugh, in the force awakens but it actually looked pretty good in this movie i will have to say that some other things that were cg did not look good and i'm not really going to go too much into that because you'll know when you see the movie what i'm talking about and i also got to talk about the music the music and the sound design superb as usual. John Williams did an amazing job with the score. I think he did a much better job this time around than he did with The Force Awakens. I thought I I think most of it was very much more memorable than any um a lot of stuff that was put into The Force Awakens. There's a lot of stuff a lot of uh songs brought back from older Star Wars movies like there's this part where the, there's the Millennium Falcon. I'm not going to try to spoil it too much, but there's a Millennium Falcon and they're fighting TIE Fighters. And it starts playing the uh, Millennium Falcon TIE Fighter battle theme, battle song from the first Star Wars. And that honestly brought a, just a smile on my face. I was so giddy at that part in the movie. It, it's just so wonderful. And yeah, I think John Williams did a great job at <coughs> introducing all the musical cues. And once again gonna have to give him supreme props on this one. Also gotta give credit to the sound designer Ben Burt, well one of the sound designers but one of the guys who's been around since the original Star Wars came out in the 70s and he's still going strong. Um, the sound design in this movie oh my god <laughs> it was wonderful. There is one part in this movie that I'll talk about um, again in my spoiler section of this video that happens and the entire theater just went silent at this one point and it was just one of the most beautiful sequences I've ever seen put to a Star Wars movie. It was fantastic. Sound design was so wonderful once again, and I gotta give props to everyone that worked on it. Okay, so now that I've gone over everything I wanted to talk about, the good, the bad, and whatnot, I want to talk spoiler talk really quickly on this. I'm not going to take too long. I just want to point out some things I really enjoy. These aren't really any review points I want to talk about, but I just want to talk about some stuff I enjoyed in this movie. First of all, Luke Skywalker Mark Hamill did an amazing job in every scene he's in, like I've mentioned before. He does a great job in all these sequences where he just decides that he doesn't want to do it anymore. He just doesn't want to deal with anything involving the Jedi anymore or anything else, and he just wants to live secluded and die alone. I love some of these sequences he's in where he's explaining how Kylo Ren uh, took over, and there's one part involving, uh, yes, again, spoilers, so you've been warned at this point, involving him talking to Yoda, once again played by Frank Oz, and also a puppet, not a CG abomination. And it was one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Is I was just so happy at that point, and I gotta, I gotta be honest, I just didn't, lo I loved it so much. And there's an awesome, of course, there's an awesome sequence towards the end of the movie where Luke Skywalker is like going to face off against Kylo Ren on this like salt mine planet, and 
he gives like so so many great there's so many great dialogue choices here and he just brings his all towards the end of this movie and this fight against Kylo Ren and then it turns out he's not actually fighting Kylo Ren and this actually kind of shocked me a bit but it kind of made sense because I was wondering how he even got to the planet in the first place considering he has no transport and then you realize he's been um, teleporting himself like like a projection of himself onto this planet from where he is at the moment and that just seeing that just gave you so much more possibilities to like what the force can do I would say and it was just an amazing sequence and to be honest it it was and after that when Luke vanishes because he's decided he's fulfilled his purpose he's stalled so that the resistance can get out and create more hope in the galaxy honestly and the freaking closing with the twin, like the revisiting of the twin sons and him sitting on this rock and then vanishing and playing the twin sons music cue over it. Oh my goodness. It was such a great send off for him. And I honestly, I can't give any more props to Mark Hamill than I have already, but goodness, he did an amazing job. All of these, all of these elements went into it all into that part that just made that part of the movie so satisfying for me there's some great quite a few great action scenes in this movie as well not as many as you would expect um when ray uh is captured captured quote unquote by kylo ren and taken to snoke and then after kylo ren kills snoke in a very hilariously funny way to be honest and I think it just emphasizes all the more that Snoke is not important Snoke was not never important really and the only thing he did was give rise to the first order or whatever and when he's just killed off so easily it honestly that was like one of my favorite parts in the movie because it just shows how insignificant he is as a villain and how the real villain this entire time is of course going to be Kylo Ren I mean i I don't know why so many people were speculating about Snoke, except for like the fact that how he could bring up another uh, order or whatever to take out the Republic and whatnot. It just seemed weird that he'd be able to. It seems weird how he'd be able to do it, and we might never know. And I'd be okay with that. I didn't think Snoke was an important person anyway. There's also the fight scene that happens right after where they kill all Snoke's guards, which was absolutely stunning and amazing. And, yeah, it was just brilliant. There's also the question of Ray's parents that is getting a lot of fans salty as well. It's that uh, her parents basically, she figures out they were n just m junk traders. They were nothing significant at all. And that she was just left on J she was just traded for on Jakku just for something completely insignificant because they couldn't take care of her anymore and of course i mean i'm fine with that i mean why did it have to be some big spectacle that her parents were just these amazing master jedi or whatever i mean why it didn't need to be that way and thankfully i gl i'm glad that Ryan Johnson um subverted our expectations with something like that a few other things are like the space battle scene right at the beginning of the movie was pretty wonderful and the final fight towards the end of the movie is also pretty good and just seeing the resistance slowly just getting torn down was really impactful I think because I, you don't really see this in any of the Star Wars movies except for maybe the very end of Return of the Jedi in which there's that space battle in which a bunch of people are getting killed very easily. And other than that, though, I don't really think you ever see the Rebels, like, getting just annihilated. I mean, unless you want to count Rogue One, which I don't even count necessarily, you don't really see the Rebels just being worn down to basically being unable to fight effectively against the First Order anymore. And it just was a very impactful part of the movie, just seeing that slowly happen over the entire runtime of this movie. And, um, other than that, I tr I'm trying to think of anything more else uh, that's spoiler talk worthy, but uh, honestly, I can't. I think I've explained everything I loved about this movie that I can't explain normally, and 
I honestly just loved this movie entirely. And with that, guys, I'm ending spoiler talk right here. And then with all that, I have to say that Star Wars The Last Jedi is worth buying on Blu-ray. So I hope I've convinced you if you've really hated this film. I hope I've convinced you why you really shouldn't. I think this is a very well-made film, well-directed, acted, written. It just, it, it fulfills so many great things that I want to see in Star Wars, and I'm glad it wasn't just a rehash of Empire Strikes Back. I don't think anyone wanted that, especially with all the comments about Force Awakens just being the exact same as A New Hope. And to be honest, I think that's what the great thing is about the Star Wars movies is they don't have to be this static piece. They don't have to be exactly the same every single time. And they can evolve. They can change. I mean, yeah, we can argue that Disney is kind of ruining them because they want to be a bit more kid-friendly. They can't have an R-rated Star Wars movie and blah, 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 blah. But I honestly, I honestly don't think uh, that's necessarily the problem. Maybe a little bit. But... Honestly, I'm really interested to see where, how the trilogy will end. I'm interested in seeing whatever Ryan Johnson's going to do with his own Star Wars trilogy towards uh, whenever that is in the future. And I honestly, I just love watching Star Wars. And um, if you want a mediocre Star Wars film, just go watch Rogue One. <laughs> and with that, guys, I want to thank you so much again for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this review very much. I'm sorry I've been on a hiatus again because I'm doing finals right now and that's really annoying. And <clears throat> once again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.